Hello and welcome back to the channel. Last week we took a look at Black Lightning number one from 1977. So if you haven't seen that one, here's a link back so that you can watch that one first. Without further ado, my name is Alex and I'm going to basically explain Black Lightning number two from 1977. It was a dark and stormy night when Peter Gamby was visited by a mysterious hooded stranger. As the stranger comes into the man's shop, they discuss the feats of one Jefferson Pierce. Meanwhile, Pierce is seen overlooking a trap set for him by Joey Toledo and decides to crash it. Jefferson fights his way through wave after wave of Toledo's goods, both with his powers and his athletic skills. Unfortunately, Toledo brought backup with him in the form of the Dark Archer, who manages to knock a hero out cold. Back with Gamby and our mystery figure, Peter recounts Jefferson's life and character. He started as a top-notch student who went on to compete in the Olympics, winning several gold medals. Pierce has now returned to his hometown to be a teacher so that he can enrich and inspire the lives of the next generation. The mystery figure now reveals that she is in town to hunt Malcolm Merlin, the Dark Archer. Merlin abandoned the League of Assassins to pursue personal glory and joined the 100 as an enforcer to protect himself from the League's retribution. Thus, the mystery figure is revealed to be... Talia al Ghul. Lightning comes to as he finds himself bound and surrounded by his foes. Toledo decides to finish Pierce off when he is hit by something he doesn't expect. The Spanish Inquisition! No, not then. He finds out that Merlin has been put in charge of Toledo's posse, but since the Dark Archer likes a challenge, he lets Pierce go and gives him a head start. Once again, please appreciate Tony Isabella's writing. Let's say I prefer a challenge. You have five minutes head start. I suppose I should be grateful or some such, but if it's all the same to you, I'll take my chances right here. As Lightning fights with the Archer, another person enters the fight as the goons watching Toledo begin to keel over. Talia begins to fight with Merlin, leading to a deadly shootout in which Toledo is killed. In the chaos, Merlin decides to bounce as Talia prepares her shot. Jefferson stops her from... Wait a second. Whoever the colorist was clearly just wanted to go home on this day. Okay, there we go. That's fixed. Anyway. Jefferson stops Talia, claiming that there's been enough death today. As she leaves, Talia warns Pierce that in his continued fight against the 100, he'd be cautious, lest he become the same creature of violence that he is fighting against. This brings us to the end of Black Lightning number 2, which is only the beginning of an 11-issue arc. The story and the writing are very good, and it definitely gets a recommended from me. That being said, I'd like to take a look at the creator of Black Lightning, Tony Isabella. Tony was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, where he developed a love for comic books and superheroes, leading to his forming of a comic book club. Tony's club was on the predominantly white west side, but he had several black friends that would come visit him from Cleveland's east side. Tony started realizing that there weren't many characters that his friends could relate to, which led Isabella to the decision that he would create more African-American characters that had the backstories and cultural values that people like his friends could closely relate to. Tony worked for Marvel on characters like Luke Cage, and he created Misty Knight, a police officer who helps Iron Fist. But it was at DC that Tony was given the opportunity to create Black Lightning the first solo African-American superhero title at that company. He wanted Jefferson Pierce to be different from other comic book characters by making him a teacher. Jefferson was primarily motivated by his love for family and his love for his community, which are huge parts of African-American culture. So as Black History Month comes to a close, we can take inspiration from heroes both real and fictional to seek to make our world a better place, not only for ourselves, but also for those that come after us. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this.